Hi, I'm Mark Goodfellow. I'm the lead elder of Church on the Way. I want to introduce us as a church to you, who we are. I want to tell you that we love the Lord Jesus Christ and we want to make him known throughout the earth. We want to work with God the Holy Spirit as he leads us and guides us in endeavoring to do this. We want to just tell you that we're a family that works together, we're united as one. We're on a journey to fulfill the purposes of God in our life. And we encourage you as we have this pioneering heart to, to go to the nations and to preach this gospel, not only in our, our nation of South Africa, but the nations of the earth, to reach out with the good news that we find in Jesus Christ. So in this process, we really do believe that we are a church on the go. We are on this journey, this adventure together. We don't have all the answers, but we do know who has the answer, and his name is the Lord Jesus Christ. So come and join us as we work together and we work on this journey to fulfill his plans and purposes for our lives. God bless you. Father, we, we thank you for the time that we can come under your word. We really ask that you would speak to us, that you would grow us in Christ this morning, and there would just be an evidence of life here today, in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm humming a bit. Sorry, Robs. There we go. Today I want to be addressing a matter of, of team, and I've labeled the message Team Church on the Way. And I know when God calls you out of the world, He calls you to Himself, and He comes and He gives us an example of who He is. And you know, God's a triune God. He's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And He is one, but He works together. There are three different distinct individuals, persons, but they are God, and they work together in team. And I want, to know, I want to say to you is that some of the biggest challenges that we have as individuals is team. Because this thing called I, self, is a real, real problem to all of us. Jesus said, deny self, take up your cross, and follow me. And we all like to think after self. But God, in His grace and in His wisdom, brings us into a place that He wants us to come into team. And I want to just encourage us, as we want to work out the kingdom of God in our lives, God wants to bring us into team. And that's going to be some of the greatest challenges that you'll ever find in your life. Why does God take you and bring you into marriage? He brings two different individuals, two different personalities, and He puts you together, and He says, I'm making you one, and now you've got to work together. And where do the greatest conflicts come in when you've got two individuals and you've got to Iron sharpens iron, and you've got to work these things out. And for me, marriage is a wonderful blessing from God. But if you don't get this thing right of wanting to work on team, and you remain an individual, and it's two eyes coming together, you don't get one. You get two. And that's the reality God wants to work to. He brings us into His team. He calls us out of the world, and He brings us into His team, His family. And he brings us in. And we've got to learn some skills when it comes to that. We're all different. Uh, my understanding from Scripture, the body of Christ is one's a hand, one's the, one's the ear, one's the eye. We're all different, but we are together in oneness. And we are held together by the Holy Spirit, but in his love. And do you know that Scripture in, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Seek first his kingdom not your kingdom. And when you, and you're going to be challenged with that, and, and all of us have been challenged in our lives, there's a, a time in your life that you can, God's going to challenge you, whose kingdom are you building? Who are you working with? And if you're building your kingdom, uh, you're not going to have all these things added to you. You're going to struggle. But when you seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, all these things get added to you. And it sounds like a very simple thing, but let me tell you, that thing will challenge you to your very core. Because until you get that thing right in your life, you will not see the things added, because then you'll be seeking after the things and not after His kingdom and His righteousness. And you know, God is for us. He's not against us. And He wants to bring us into the fullness of what He has for us. So my text today is from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 to 25, and I want to read that to you. 
and you all know it well, but I want you to see it in a different context this morning, in the context of team. Let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as the habit of some, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day drawing near. And here, the writer to the Hebrews says, stir up love and good works as you, you don't neglect the meeting together and encouraging one another as you see the day approaching. Now the day is approaching. The Lord is returning. The time is short. God is coming back. Uh, we don't know the exact time, but he's coming back. And, but he's stirring us up because I really believe there's a time coming now where God wants to work in through his church, not just as individuals, as us together to actually to reach out to the world. You know, Israel... God chose them not just to bless them. He chose them to be a blessing to the nations. And I really do believe is they tried, but they didn't achieve that. They didn't achieve a blessing to the nations. And it's the same with us, His church. He's called us out of the world, not just to bless us, but us to be a blessing to the nations. And that's where I really believe this outworking that God wants to do through us. He wants to bring us to a place of fullness in Him, that we can do these good works, that we can bear the, the fruit of, of Christ, that the love of God can flow through us, that we can encourage one another that the world can be blessed we we don't exist for ourselves do you know that you don't exist for your kingdom you don't exist for your work you don't exist for your family you exist for god and for those out there and i tell you when we get that transition right god begins to do something wonderful in and through our lives so let's not neglect meeting together why because this is something of the wonder of god's fellowship that he created us for one another and I believe as we find that one another, as we prayed even last week, love each other. Did you experience something different when you began to love one another last week and you prayed and you shared your lives with one another? It's a key. It's a key because as we come together as his family, as his team, and we do these things, life becomes so full. You know, I've watched people over life, when they become lone rangers, it's all about them their life becomes dark, their life becomes selfish, and it seems to don't, doesn't have the joy. But when people live for others and, and care for others and, and look for, I look at my dear wife, and I don't want to embarrass her, but Nikki looks after other people, and she finds the joy of the Lord in her life because she's learned the secret. It's not about her, it's about others. And I want to just say that's a key for this thing, working out in team. We've got to love one another, and as we love one another, we find the fullness that God has for us. In Genesis 2, verse 18, God saw man as he created. He said, it's not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper, fit, suitable for him. And we see that in marriage. But we see that not only in marriage do we find companionship, do we find this, this impact of family on, on loving one another, but there's a strength of two are better than one. And even us as we come into the family of God, doesn't God wants to put us together that we are stronger together than if we are alone. And we all come individuals into this context and I never chose you, God chose you. God chose you to be part of this family and as you're part of this family and as you submit to that and you work together in team, things work out better. Why does God, when we orchestrate things, there's a hosting team, there's a, there's a music team, there's a there's a prayer team. Everything's a team right through the scriptures. Why do we have life groups? It's like a team. All these things, God puts you together with one another to work these things out. And as we, as we forge these partnerships, we find that God begins to bring increase in our lives. So as we look at scriptures, we, we see team is right from the very beginning. Uh, I'm not going to go through for the sake of time, but Moses and Aaron and her in Exodus 17 verses 10 to 12 Moses, they were fighting, there was a war going on, and when Moses held his hands up, they would win the war. Joshua and down in the valley were winning the war. But when his hands got tired, they lost the war. But then Aaron and Ur came, and they held his hands up, and they won the war. And there's something in that. When we, we, when we stand together, when we hold one another's hands up, we begin to win this battle that we're in. We become overcomers. We become victorious in that. Very key, standing together. David and his mighty men, we read in 1 Chronicles that he had some mighty men and they supported him and he worked with a team and the establishment of his rule and reign in Israel was through his mighty men. Jesus, Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, 
he never did it himself. He chose 12 men to be apostles, and he worked with a bigger team. We see in the scripture there were many women that worked with him. Mark chapter 6, verse 7, he called the 12 disciples and, and, and began to send them out two by two, and he gave them authority over unclean spirits. Jesus called 12 together. He worked in team. He never worked in isolation. He brought people together. He was always embracing people into what he was doing. The church, the early church with Paul and the missionaries, the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 13, again, as the church gathered together, and they see they were ministering to the Lord. There God, the Holy Spirit, set apart Barnabas and Saul for the work that they had set apart. And then I want to read the scripture, and maybe you've not read this before, but Paul, who ministered in, in Rome, and, he, and his, his greetings to the church in Romans chapter 16, verse 3 to 16. And I want you to see the individuals, maybe not pronounce their names correctly, but there were individuals in the church in Rome that were vital to the outwork. And I want to just say, put your name in there. You are vital. You are important to God in, the, in his church and in this church at this time. So yeah, Paul's greeting the church in Rome. Greet Priscilla, Prisca and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who risked their necks for my life, whom I only give thanks, but to all the churches of the Gentiles give thanks as well. Greet also the church in their house. Greet my fellow Eponitus, who was the first convert to Christ in Asia. Greet Mary, who worked hard for you. Greet Andronicus and Junior, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners. They are well known as apostles, and they were in Christ Jesus, Christ before me. Greet Epilatus, my beloved of the Lord. Greet Urbanus, a fellow worker in Christ, and my beloved Stachius. Greet Apelles, approved in Christ. Greet those who belong to the family, Aristobulus. Greet my kinsman Herodian. Greet those in the Lord who belong to the family of Narcissus. Greet those who are in the Lord, Tramphinia, Traposa. Greet the beloved Persis, the work who work hard in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, his mother, and have been the mother to me as well. Greet Ansicius, Phlegon, Hermes, Popovus, Hermas, and the brothers who are with them. Greet Philigius, Julia, oh, I'm getting these names, <laughs> Nerus and his sister Olympus, and all the saints who are with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss, and all the churches of Christ greet you. Why all those names? Because they were part of the church. They were part of God's family. They were part of his team, and it was a mix. And you know, so often when we come into the light of any structure, any organization, we always look with eyes of hierarchy. We look at the top. We look at those that are seemingly important. When you go into your business, who's the MD? Who's the, who's the financial director in these things? And you think they are the important ones. But here God comes, and Paul writes here to these individuals, every individual is important in Christ. And you are, you are one of those individuals, part of this family, going forward. So I want to just let the word wash over you. You know, sometimes we can preach and uh, but sometimes it's the word when i just read the word to you let the word speak to you in respect of what does it need to work in team together in ecclesiastes chapter to four chapter four verses nine to twelve two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil for if they fall one will lift up his fellow but woe to him who is alone for he falls and has not other to lift him up again if two lie together they keep warm but how can one keep warm alone and though a man might prevail against one who is alone, the two will withstand. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. Stand together. Very, very important. Maybe you've been challenged that you are like to be alone and selfish, but may the Lord speak through his word to you today and encourage you. In 1 Corinthians 12 verse 12, for just as the body is one and has many members, all the members of the body, though many are one body, so is it with Christ. We are one body. You must realize that you are the body of Christ and that God has given us different parts. In 1 Corinthians 12, verse 14 to 27, talks about the different members of the body and every part of the body is important to what God has called us to do. Romans 15, 1, We who are strong have an obligation to bear with the failings of the weak, not to only to the pleasures of ourselves. We are to lift one another up. So I have found over the years, when I'm going through a tough time, I must come and be with the body of Christ. And it was then not necessarily that they needed to know my, what issues that I was going through, but when I was together, just through the encouragement and the love of God's people, being with God's people, 
I was encouraged. I was strengthened, and God restored me. And I want to say to you, you might be going through uh, uh, an issue or going through matters at the moment. You need God's body and be with his body. And that's why we encourage, this is good on a Sunday morning together and to fellowship afterwards, but you need to be in a life group because in this team that we have, we need friends. You need friends. And this is, your, this is your friends. And yes, we're not perfect and we're all different in, in every way. But this is your answer. God is, this is your answer to where you are. God has raised you up for a place like this and here to relate to this family. So don't pull away. Don't seek the counsel of the world. Come within the church. Come within this team. And there you will find your strengthening. 1 Peter 4, verse 8 to 10. Keep loving one another, serving one another. Proverbs 27, verse 17. Iron sharpens iron, and one man sharpens another. You know, we all need to be sharpened, and I know at home those knives get blunt, and you've got to cut the tomato or cut the onion, and you've got to sharpen them or cut the meat, and we all need to be sharpened. And how does God do that? He sharpens it through one another. It's not through conflict. It's not through criticism. It's through love as we encourage one another. Hebrews 10 again, stirring up one another to love and to good works, encouraging one another. You need to be encouraged. You need to be encouraged. You know, when people speak down at you, remember those teachers at school said, you will never amount to anything. Those words were killer. But when the teacher came alongside you, you can do it. It's not that difficult. Just hang in there. Day at a time, you can do it. Strength comes. And all of you, I just want to say to you, you need to be encouraged, and we come to encourage you in this process. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 1 talks about us being the family of God. Philippians 2 verse 3 to 4, do nothing out of selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. That's what actually happens when God transforms you and brings you into his family. No longer do you don't become the, the numero uno, he Others become important. And it's amazing, amazing when you focus on your life and you start to see other people and you start to care for other people and you start to love for other people, even in your marriages, even in your relationship with those that are seemingly going to be, look out for them and being concerned about them. You will see this abundance of life come into your life. In Psalm 133, verse 1, Behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. There's a oneness when this team comes together and there's unity. I was, um, in, in, when I was still in the business world and we were part of a team, of a bunch of young consultants and they were making a lot of money because we were implementing a SAP system, but they were so individualistic and they were never standing together. It was all about the money and about what they could get and about their, their prestige of, of, of their consulting skills. But the, the management team was very clever and, and got us around and we got down to a value system and we agreed about an, a value system and managed a value system and held one another accountable to that. And the beauty of that, that whole process, even though it took a lot of time and a lot of heartache to do that, was the unity. There was just this thing, there was such a diverse group. There were worldly men and worldly women, godly men and godly women, but the unity that came was such a strength. And you know, when you're leading a business or leading a team or leading in a family, when there's no unity, it's mayhem. Absolutely mayhem. But when there's unity, it doesn't mean perfection, but when there's unity, it is pleasant and it is wonderful. In Exodus 18, verse 17 to 21, there was Moses. Moses had been raised up by God. And he was being the judge of Israel when all the difficulties were coming. And then his father-in-law Jethro came and said to him, but you're doing it wrong. You need to raise up other people and delegate your authority that they can judge over different matters also that you don't carry the burden. So God's intention is never for one individual to do everything, but to raise up a team. And yes, that's a challenge in, in, in some of our circumstances to raise up a team and to delegate that authority. Again, I've got there many scriptures here, but the, the scripture I want to say, Amos chapter 3, verse 3, do two walk together. That's important. We need to walk together. Helen Keller said, alone we can do so little. Together we can do so much. So what I wanted to do is, as we, just the remainder of our time here, I just really want to put some practical things in how to build team 
what does team really mean and what is God's way in this thing. Every team needs a leader and every leader needs a team. And that's an absolutely key thing. And you'll find that you're either on a team at the moment or, or God is raising you up to be on a team and roles always change. Sometimes you're the leader of the team and sometimes you become a, a team member and, and to work those things out is a very important thing because how you operate on team is so important. We see, we raise our children up to be on the family team and to do things around the home. When, when you do, and we have a problem in our own lives, we, we're raising our children up and we've got to train them. If, if mom and dad are doing the dishes all the time and all the washing and all the cleaning, it's not a team. It's got to be, we all got our roles to do, and there's these things to be done around the house. And yes, sometimes as a team leader, you, you actually do more than, than others because you show them the example, but we've got to raise a team, so encouraged. So what is this? We, we're working, we never do it alone. God's never intention is to do it alone. Yes, there's a time alone with the Lord, but he wants us to work on team. We need to model team in every way. I want to encourage you as you as you focus in doing things wherever you're doing things, try and raise a team around you. It is, it's not always easy to do that because it's easier to do it by yourself. I'm capable. I can do it. I don't need a team. I know the job gets done well better if I do it myself. That's not always God's way. Because sometimes when you raise someone up and you bring them alongside, you've got to train them. You've got to be patient. You've got to release them into that thing. And sometimes they make mistakes. And then you get so uptight in the process, but it's actually training you and training them. It's God's way. What does the Lord deal with us? He does the same thing in that. There's something in this outworking of team that brings God's presence into, into the outworking because it's his nature to do that. So what is the model of, of what we do? We lead with a team. We don't lead past a team. We don't lead through a team. We, we're not led by a team. We're not employed by a team, but we lead in team. And that's a very, very important thing, is that we must be in a place to be able to be used by God through a team. So every team needs a value system, needs, needs to take ownership of those, those things. And when that takes place, as I said earlier, the team that we had, we built, there was such a strength in the company that we had. And this was an ungodly company. This wasn't a godly company. Um, God was working with him. And the, what actually happened is, in that environment, we were part of a consulting house, and we, we acquired a whole lot of um, other ERP systems that came in, that's enterprise uh, resource planning systems that came alongside. And they were of different value systems, different unit teams. And when they put it together with ours, all of a sudden the value system was broken. And that team, we were such a fight to try and get that. But because the people were coming in and went of the same value system, it broke the team, brought disunity, and actually the whole thing fell apart. And I wanted to say the same thing can happen here in, in the life of the church. We all come from different environments. We all come from different backgrounds. You come with your thinking, understanding. And if you don't embrace the oneness of who we are, you can be destructive. You can, you can bring disunity to the family. And I wanted to say that's where God wants us. It's all about his system, his kingdom, his values. And as we allow him to build us together, we can bring this one, oneness and this unity. So then for team leaders, just encourage you, those that are husbands, those that are, are leading, whether you're in your work environment, whether you're leading in the church environment, so some skills to, to, to go forward in, in, as you build teams. Pray for your teams. Prayer is a very, very important part of this thing because when the, we, we, we allow God to come onto the scene, he, he allows this oneness and this unity to come through. Build teams, as I said earlier, identify in, in every area, recruit people and de deploy people at every level that you find things to, to build teams. Uh, I, just, I just reiterate, just in, in the Lord, because when you do this thing, you're going to be building the God's pattern and God will carry a wonderful outworking of multiplication through you as you allow teams to operate in and through your life. Remember, as a team leader, you're an example. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. So sometimes when you're leading a team, the, re the role is more difficult because you've got to be sure that you are, f are following the Lord. I'm as good as I follow the Lord. And because as I follow him, you can follow me. And same with the eldership team, same in your families, husbands, wives, as you follow the Lord, your children and those around you are observing you and they're seen. And, and your example is so important, the culture that you carry for what they are doing. 
yes, we, we call it on-the-job training. Sometimes it's not a formal training, but the reality is who you're carrying in your heart will be a reality what is carried through to your teams. If you're divisive, if you're in a place where you you argumentative at, at every level, don't be surprised if that comes through in the team that you're actually leading and the family that you find yourself in. Very real thing, as you lead the, the team, you need to be mature and you need to be growing. There's a maturity. To, to lead takes maturity and you've got to ask God to help you to make you mature. Immature leaders actually bring destruction. And that's why we trust God to bring through people that have, have some experience and have some understanding. That's why when you go into the workplace and they want to employ you, they, they look at your CV. And I remember when I first came out of studying and I uh, finished my articles and I landed up going looking for a job and they came and said, where's your experience? I said, I've never had an opportunity to get experience. But I can understand their thinking is because the maturity sometimes, it takes maturity to lead people. It takes maturity to, to bring people through. And that's where experience sometimes comes. It doesn't always, it's an ultimate. Um, some people do grow up with those leadership skills. But I want to encourage you, we need to be mature. When you're dealing with your teams, as you're leading them, listen to your team. There's a voice within your team we learned it some time ago, Nikki and I, there's, we did a marriage course and this thing called LUV, uh, listen, understand, and validate. Listen to what people are saying, understand what they're saying, and then validate. Hear what they're saying and then articulate it, what you're actually saying back to them, and it brings freedom. Because so often we react and we don't respond. We react because we get our selfishness into a knot and we're not hearing what the other person is saying and we create conflict ourselves. And I want to encourage you is that as you lead a team, there's always a place to listen. Listen to your children. They have a voice. Husbands, listen to your wives. Wives, listen to your husbands. <laughs> there's a very, very important part in this thing as we learn to communicate and encourage one another. Empower the gifting in, in your teams. Not everyone is equal. We've all got different talents. There's, there's talents and gifts within the church, but re recognize and release those things. Don't restrict people. Release them. You know, if um, I'm thinking like Dieter's team, you've got a good bricklayer, let him go. Let him make decisions about things. Yes, um, consult with you, but release the gifting. In the same with the church, and we're not trying to hold people back. We want to identify what your gifting and your calling is to release you into those things. And then hold people accountable and responsible. I think there's a thing when you delegate authority to, to even God as he delegates within his church, he holds us accountable and responsible. Are we going to be good stewards of what being given? So when you re are released to those things, be accountable and responsible in that. And then build a community of fun. I think there's an aspect of team when you're doing things. We can't be serious all the time, and we've got to be able to have times of fellowship and doing and doing some fun things together. Then as team members, as we're all team members, we've all got to learn to be team members on God's family and on, on your families at home and in work. Pray for your team leader regularly. It's so easy, and I've been in that environment, is that those that are in leadership it is so easy to criticize. It is so easy to slander, to pull down. It's so easy to come back and, and afterwards with 2020 vision to say, I told you so. That is not right. We've got to be there in a place of, of humility. We've got to be a place of actually praying. Again, prayer is such a key thing. Be a joy and an encouragement. Do not be a balancing figure, figure in the matter that, well, I will make the thing right. No, 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 no. Be part of the team. Try and work together. Be, be an encouragement on that team. Hold the team leader accountable and give honest feedback. And I think there's, there's something of a wonder I've learned even when I was in the business world is that you work together in team, but you manage upwards. How do you manage upwards? You bring your innovation. You bring your thinking. You sub bring it to the leader and you submit it. You don't come and say, tell, you must do this, you submit it. And whether it's accepted or rejected is not your responsibility. It's the same with your prayers. You bring your prayers with faith and believing, but you leave it with God. And he answers the prayers, and he can say no, and he can say yes. That's the reality of him being God. It's the same with your team leader. As also as a team member, participate in the team. Don't stand on the side and watch what is actually happening. Be enthusiastic, be innovative. 
I, I just remember the, the, when there was initiative and enthusiasm by team members, it just brought joy to the whole thing. Don't stand on the sidelines and just watch. Get involved, cooperate, and then communicate well. Communication on any team is such an important thing. One of the things that falls down on most teams is communication. And I know we've got all the tools in the world at the moment with social media and stuff like that to actually communicate. But let me say to you, sometimes face-to-face -face communication is still the best communication to take place. So I want to just say, as much as we communicate through WhatsApp, a phone call is good, and actually meeting with you face-to-face -face is actually better. It takes longer, it's not convenient, it's not quick fix, but it actually works better. So learn to communicate. Husbands and wives, communicate well <laughs> with one another. Talk. What are some of the obstacles to, to teamwork, to good teamwork? Immaturity. Where you've got an immature understanding of what it is, especially to what's actually happening, and you, you rant and rave, and it's all about yourself. Selfishness gets in the way. You haven't denied the flesh. What happens? It brings obstacles to, to that process where you do not bear with one another, where you just consider about your own interests, where you, you don't trust and there's no vulnerability and transparency, and where you break down unity. This can be a real problem. Another problem in, in obstacles when it comes to team, and I'm talking about the church and I'm talking about us, is to have the right team. And I know when you're in the workplace and you do the job interviews and stuff like that, you've got to choose right. Not everyone is at the right place at the right time to be on your team. And uh, that's a key thing because not everyone is, is working together with you. And we all go through different things in our different lives. But ensure that you have the right people with the right, the right talents, the right gifting, and the right heart to be able to build together. Because you see, you might have an, a, an outworking of life, your DNA, and you put someone on your team and you might just be conflict. And uh, I know in, in the workplace, if you employ the wrong person today, it's very difficult to try and move people out. Very difficult. In the church, I can't move you out. <laughs> I'm here to work with you and to God to transform you and to renew you at the end of the day. But maybe you are that difficult person and um, God wants to change you and to, to change everyone. So yes, iron sharpens iron. But I want to tell you, if God wants to build team, there's got to be change in, in, in the process. Also, another obstacle to a good team is avoiding conflict. Conflict has to be dealt with, and none of us like to be dealing with conflict, but I want to just say it's a reality that sometimes, I remember we went to Johan's house, and he's got a, a big elephant picture in his, in his lounge there. And he says to me, Mark, when things happen, you've got to walk the elephant out the room. And... <laughs> And that's true. Sometimes it's not easy to do those things, and you've got to approach those things. And we don't like to do those things. I don't like to do those things, but I know at times I have to do those things. And we do it with love, and we do it with God's grace going forward in that. So why have I, why have I brought this to you? Because I really believe God wants to raise the team up here at Church on the Way. I've just seen over the last while... The earth has been through a major transition. We've been through a, a pandemic of the COVID. Life has changed. Um, uh, outlook on life has changed. People I found personally, as I look to the world, have become more selfish after the pandemic. Everyone has become isolated and people are drawn to themselves. And that was never God's plan. The devil's plan has always been to isolate and I just know God wants to open that up again. And I just know what God wants to do and intends to do in and through this church and this family is to raise up his people to release and to be a blessing to this community and to the nations of the earth. Now, that's easy to say, but how do we do this? We can say, well, I can ask you, are you a team member? And you will say, yes, I am. Um, and are you, are you participating in the team? And you can say, yes, I am. But I want to just say there's some core things. There's a, a value system that needs to be embraced. You know, when I was still in the business world, I remember there was a, um, a senior consultant that was working with Telcom, and Telcom was going through a lot of trouble at that time. 
and they found that the value system at the senior executive and the value system at the grassroots were two two different value systems and they had to pull the two together and it's the same in any organization in, in, in any structure is that our value systems when you've come in here are not the same they're not the same and that's why Jesus said, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me, because we've got to be transformed and we've got to be renewed and we've got to get onto the same value system. And to say, I remember my, my army training. I came out of school. I was rough and young and knew nothing. And what did they do? <clears throat> they put a uniform on me. And I remember very clearly the corporal saying to me, now that you've got a uniform on, you're not a soldier. Just because you wear a uniform, you're not a soldier. And it's the same thing when you come into the kingdom of God. You might be born again. You might be filled with the spirit of God. But, oh, you're a son of God. I don't know. There's a maturity that comes. And we've got to be trained. And I remember it wasn't an option in the army whether you went through basic training. Everyone did it. Was it easy? Never. Did we want to do it? No. Did I want to cut my hair? No. But they all put us and they made us equal. They cut our hair. I remember the story. We went there and in those days it was long hair. All the guys had long hair. And we could recognize them. And we went and we went to the barber and we came out there and I couldn't recognize my platoon because the hair was gone. And I even I looked at myself in the mirror and I said, who's this convict? <laughs> the reality. But they bring you down to build you up. And yes, they did do that. The army came and they trained us and it was imperative because when we went into, the, into the, the fighting situation, we were trained, we had some understanding and yes, we went into a deeper training and there was always training in, in the military to the next level, but we needed that. So what are we wanting to do? And you've, what we've done, and you'll see on the board what I've done outside here, we've worked hard to work out the equipping in Christ prospectus, as I, I shared with you the other day, where we wanting to take the church to bring the church into a place of maturity. So where are we starting? We, we want to get our foundations right again. So we, we, have, we developed this, this um, I think it's about 16, 17 weeks of training. And yes, it's going to take a commitment from you and from us to get that. And, it's, and I want to just say nothing is forced, but it's highly recommended that we, we all do it, and we're going to be working out the semantics of that. And I really want to encourage you, go and read what's there. We're wanting to start on Wednesday, the 12th of April. We're going to be starting at UC Wireless up the road because of load shedding at 7.15 to 8.15 around there. Um, trust me, we'll be able to do it in, in that time. But what is our heart about? It? We want to get us all on the same page. And to be united and the process once we've got our foundations and our understanding what we have a, an understanding of that we're going to explore with you what is your gifting what is your calling what are your talents and how god can utilize you in and through his kingdom in and through his church so we we really got a we, we've got a plan to get you working in the kingdom Yes, you are sitting here. God has invested in you. He's gave everything for you. He's invested in you, and we want to raise you up and release you. I don't want to hold you back. It's not about getting into position. It's not about becoming deacons or elders. It's actually raising you up for what God has intended for you to be part of this team. And as we all found our diversity, God will take us deeper and further. So, yes, there's much more to that whole thing. But all I'm just saying is that God at this time... I don't want you to run away and to get into isolation. I even encourage those folk that are online there, please, it's wonderful you online and you be there, but keep, be part of this. We do it together, and it's not a criticism, it's an encouragement. We are a team together. I want to just say is that as God has raised myself and the elders to lead you and to shepherd you, we cannot do this alone. If I'm going to do it alone, I'm actually going to go and find another role because I cannot do it. I'm going to burn. It's not God's intention. We are together. I love you. I, I want you to succeed in what God, and I want the Lord to say to you one day, well done, good and faithful servant. But if you're not part of the team, I cannot encourage you. I cannot grow you. And uh, I know you all live busy lives. I also live a busy life. And, but this is going to take a commitment. 
from God. And I know that you've got 101 excuses. I've got a busy, I'm late from work, I cannot get there on time, I haven't eaten, all these things. There's a million of one excuses. I'm asking you to hear God and to commit to what he's in. So yes, we will try and facilitate where people can't get there and to catch up um, through recordings and stuff like that. But our best plan is to do it in person because, as I said earlier, to communicate, we want to see you face to face. And that's going to take a commitment. Maybe you've never committed. Maybe you've never done a foundations course. Maybe you have, but maybe you've never done this one and to encourage you. Because I know God wants to raise you up that you can raise others up. So we're going to be building you that you can go and impact others. So I think for me, it's very, very exciting what God has got a plan. He wants to take us deeper and further in that. Any questions? Because I've said a lot and maybe not said enough, but any questions about this process that we want to follow? Any of the elders want to say something in that regard? I'm excited. I really am excited what God's wanting to do. He's called you by name and he wants to, you're on his team and he wants to grow you into a place of maturity. We're not just to be born again and filled with the Spirit. We're not just to be doing our own thing. We're laying down our lives for him. And I'm telling you, folk, give to the Lord. It has eternal rewards. Eternity is a long time. And eternity, what we, what we, not what we do, but that we follow the Lord in what he commands us to do. And we do that with all our heart. I, I can assure you, our reward is going to be great because there's a reward just for you as individual, but there's a reward for us as our togetherness. I really do believe that. As the church stands together and works together, there's an incredible thing. May you be on that, in that. Can I pray for you? Father, this sounds like such a simple thing of being part of the team. And I just really ask that you would stir our hearts, Lord, because you're taking us deeper and further in the outworking of your kingdom. And Lord, as you are the head of your church and you said that you will build your church, and that's what you'll build us, but you use us to encourage one another, to stir one another, to train one another, and to bring a firm foundation in you that, Lord, that we can be a blessing to our community and to the nations. And Lord, as we just, we give this to you, we, we give you what we've prepared, we give you ourselves, and we ask, Father, that will you glorify your name in and through us, that, Lord, that out of this, that your kingdom can advance, that your kingdom will be first, that your righteousness will be established on the earth, and that you would be glorified in and through us as your people now. So thank you for your blessing now, in Jesus' name. Amen. So just as an exciting thing, it, 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 there's no um, holds on the thing. I just had an idea. I thought maybe we should get some T-shirts. Uh, I don't know the exact price yet. I'm, I'm budgeting about 100 Rand a T-shirt. If you can't afford that, um, we will sponsor you. But there's some men's T-shirts on this side and some women's T-shirts on that side. If you would like to be part of that process, put your name down and um, the number of quantities that you like to order, and we're going to run with that. All we're going to do is we're going to have a T-shirt that we stand together. It's just a symbolism of, of who we are with Church on the Way logo on, um, maybe with church, the team, I don't know, but we will work that out. So that's just a, an indication of what God's wanting to do. Amen. Um, I'm not going to iron it. I haven't, we've, we've run over time. But the Lord bless you. Come and fellowship with us. Come and have a tea and coffee with us. There's some the cappuccinos. If you can't afford a cappuccino, there's a provision for that too. So God bless you all. Thank you.